What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to track the NASDAQ 100 or the QQQ, whatever you want to call it. If you guys don't know what the NASDAQ is, I'm sure I'll make a video about it and then there's a link that you'll be able to click. But right now, let's dive in. This is the NASDAQ 100 and I know what you're thinking. Uh, there are 104, uh, well I guess 103 stocks here. This is just what I pulled off of Wikipedia, which I'll show you guys how to do that. But here are all 100 companies, uh, quote unquote 100. And we could filter either by name, by ticker, by your performance year to date, whether it be the worst to the best, your change date, uh, your percent change, whether it be from worst or best, market cap, Apple obviously be at the top, then Microsoft, uh, price and then earnings. I mean, you could really, it's all up to you. You could put on whatever you want. This is just what I thought was cool. It's really cool being able to see exactly which stocks are within the NASDAQ 100 and exactly how they're performing next to all of their peers. So again, why would you want to do this? I don't know, but you're on this video. So clearly you want to do it for whatever reason. Let's dive right in. So we'll start nice and clean, nice and fresh. And by that, I mean, we're gonna actually copy this and I'm gonna paste that into here as a nice little guide. You guys don't need to see me write all of this stuff at the top, but pretty much we got our company name, we got our ticker, we got our performance year to date, we got our change, our market cap, price and earnings. You guys can put whatever criteria you want up at the top if you just wanna follow along with me, great. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Google and you're gonna type in list of the NASDAQ 100 stocks. This is what the QQQ is made up of or the NASDAQ 100. And you're gonna scroll until you find our best friend, Wikipedia. You're gonna click on that, give you the history of the NASDAQ so you can actually read this. It's made up of 103 equity securities, blah, blah, blah. Let's scroll all the way down. These are all the big tech stocks that we all love. And you're gonna copy this entire list right here. So copy all the way down to zoom and we're going to control shift V to put it in. There we go. We now have the company names and the tickers for the NASDAQ. Um, what we could already start doing is up here, we could click on the filter right there that will filter everything. So we could already filter by company name or by ticker. So now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. And this is where the little bit of uh, coding comes into play. If you've seen some of my other videos, it's gonna be very similar to that. Uh, but let's just, uh, let's jump right in. So the first thing is going to be your performance year to date. Or you know what? We're going to hold off on that one because we're gonna be pulling this information from Finviz. It's a little bit longer cold. Let's start with one of the easier ones. And how about price? Price has gotta be the easiest one. You guys may already know what you're doing here, but if you hit equals and then Google Finance, you click on that, you are going to type in, well, you're not gonna type, you're actually gonna click right on that. You're gonna hit whatever the first ticker is. So for me, it's Apple. You're gonna hit comma, open quotation. You're gonna type in price, because that's what we want. You can already see the price is right there, 119 close quotation, close parentheses, hit enter, boom, there you go. Look at that, suggested autofill. Obviously we want that, let's hit that, and we are done with price. So actually what we're gonna wanna do now is I'm just gonna click on uh, F right there, um, and I'm going to center everything, and I'm gonna add a nice little uh, price tag to it, the uh, format currency. So now it's formatted in currency, and again, we already have the filter set, so we can filter by price, Sirius XM at the bottom and Amazon at the very top. So now that we have all of that done, we can move on to market cap. Market cap is another easy one, equals Google Finance. We're gonna hit the ticker symbol right here, comma, market cap. So quotations, market cap cap, close quotations, close parentheses, hit enter. Yes, we want it for all. There it is. 
Again, we could do that and add the currency symbol. Now we are done with market cap. Okay, the last easy one is your change price. So here's change. I keep saying change price. I mean change percentage. Here is change. What we're going to do is we're going to hit equals. Again, Google Finance. Then we are going to select the ticker symbol that we want for within the same uh, column, right? So or row, row two. So I'm hitting on Amazon. I'm going to hit comma, open uh, quotations, change price, P, well, I keep saying price, percentage. It's going to be PCT, close uh, quotations, close parentheses. Now we're not done here because we're going to get a decimal point and I don't want a decimal point. So we're going to go back in between the equals and the G and we're going to open parentheses, okay? And we're going to go all the way over here. And then we are going to hit the divided by 100, close, hit enter, suggested autofill. Then we are going to hit percentage. The reason why I had to do divide by 100, if you don't do this, it's not going to read as 0.15%. It would actually read as 15%. And this would read as negative 130%. Um, and, and I can assure you that a company can't go down 131%. So that's why you have to do that just so it's right. And uh, again, let's, let's center that. And all of this can be dynamic as well. Our lowest, uh, our most negative change for the day. And our most positive change, Tesla. Because as I'm recording this, Tesla was just added to the S&P 500. Now we go to our harder ones. Performance year to date and earnings. Why would you want to know both of these? Well, I think performance year to date is definitely a cool one. Uh, but earnings could be really nice if you have the entire list of the NASDAQ. Because you can see which stocks will be coming up every single day or every single week. Especially if you're a short-term day trader or even a swing trader. Very important to know when earnings are coming up. And it, maybe you have some of these positions. Also a good thing to know. But let's start with performance year to date. And this one is going to be pulled from Finviz. And the way we're going to do this is we actually need to go to finviz.com. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to type in finviz.com. There it is. And it doesn't matter which ticker, we'll just type in Apple. And here we go. Once we have this, we're gonna be pulling from this chart down here, okay? And what we're going to want, if we're doing performance year to date, right here, I want this, that's 62.36%. And you can pull anything from here. This is where you can really get creative with your own chart. You don't need to follow what I'm doing. But here we go. The first thing we wanna do is hit equals. And we're going to want to do import HTML, okay? Now, what are we importing? Well, let's go back to Finviz. We want to import this right here. This finviz.com slash quote dot A-S-H-X question mark T equals. Now, it says Apple. We actually don't want the Apple. So we're just going to go up to equals. So we're going to highlight all of this. I'm going to hit control copy, go back here and control V. We have all that. We need to make sure this is in quotations though. So it's green. You want your text to be green. I was actually uh, talking to someone in Italy who was following one of my other YouTube videos. He was having some problems um, and it was uh, just little stuff like that. We were able to troubleshoot it and make it work. But it was stuff like the text wasn't the right color. For example, green. That's really important. If it's not green right now, you're doing something wrong. So as long as it's green, what we could do is we will close the parentheses, not parentheses, the quotation right there. And we're going to hit ampersand, right? So shift seven. And we are going to select the cell. So it's going to be this cell for me, B2. Then I'm going to hit comma. Open quotations, we want to type in table. 
And again, table should be green, right? And then we're going to hit comma. And now what table are we pulling from? Well, on Finviz, if we go back to Finviz, this table in the source data is table nine. So we're going to hit nine, close parentheses. We're going to hit comma. And now we need to figure out which one we want. We want this right here. So which one is this? Well, we can actually count it out. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the 12th column. And then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, row 6. Or I might be confused my columns and rows. But essentially what we need to do is 6, 12. Hit close. Hit enter. We are missing something. What are we missing? What we are actually missing is in front of import HTML, we are going to want index. Okay, so if you do index, quotation, quotation, hit enter, it's loading. There we go. There's our performance year to date 427% for Tesla. If we want to just double check that because no, we were on Apple here. Let's type in Tesla and we could check. And yes, there it is, 427%. But you might not like the little asterisks on each side. I know I do not. So what you do is in front of index, we are going to actually open our parentheses, hit substitute. We're going to type in substitute. So S-U-B-S-T-I-T-U-T-E. And then we're going to close, I mean, open our parentheses again. And then at the end, at the very end, we're going to hit comma, asterisk, uh, well, open quotations, asterisk, close quotations. So what this is saying is replace. We want to substitute asterisk for comma, comma, for nothing. That's what that means. I'm going to close that out, hit enter. We get an error. Let's see what we did wrong. Right here, it looks like I had a period, not a comma. We changed that. There we go, the asterisks are gone. So now let's do a little bit of that. We center it, good, that is done. If we go up to this where we had the little crosshair, if we double click right there, it will load all of them for us. So all of those are now loading. Now you are loading over 100 different stocks, so it might take a while for them to be plugged in. You can see they're slowly being plugged in. So just be patient with it, it doesn't mean you did it wrong, it just means that it, your computer might be slow or the internet might be slow, whatever it might be. Let's now go over to earnings. Earnings is gonna be similar to this formula. It's gonna be a little bit longer and we're gonna pretty much copy a lot of what we have here. We're gonna be copying the substitute index import HTML, Finviz, uh, the B2, table nine, and we're just changing this here, the six and the 12. So you could actually go ahead and copy all of this, go into earnings, paste that, and instead of six and 12, what we're going to want is, and we can go back here, and we could see here's earnings right here. So this will be 11 and six. So if we go back, we change this to 11, and six and hit enter, there we go. There's our earnings date. Do that, now all of them are loading as well. Could center that. If you wanna make all the text the same because sometimes the text is a little different just so everything looks a little bit more uniform. There we go, now everything's loading. Again, it might take a little bit, it might take a couple of minutes to load, but this is everything. Everything is plugged in now, if we go back to what I originally had right here. I just changed around some of the colors. I did some conditional formatting. For those of you who don't know, you go down to conditional formatting and you could put this in. I've made a couple of videos on how to do conditional formatting, but you are good to go now. You have every single company in the NASDAQ set for you to filter through. And again, this could be great for if you're a day trader, swing trader, or maybe you have a lot of stocks that are within the NASDAQ. I think every stock I own is in the NASDAQ. Right here, we've got three of them, PayPal, Adobe, and Netflix all next to each other. So I could see right here, okay, out of all of them, 
PayPal is performing the best uh, during the year out of all three. Which one's the biggest market cap? Which one is um, what the prices are? And I really think the most important thing is earnings. So I could see right here. Okay, PayPal just had their earnings. Netflix was back in October. The next earnings date is going to be Adobe. If you're a day trader, you might want to filter through earnings to see what's coming up. So here we go. It is November 11th right now for me. So we can just go down and it looks like the next earnings is going to be right here, November 12th. So we got Cisco Applied Materials and however you say that company's name, P PDD. All right, here's all the tickers. So maybe you're a day trader, you want to day trade off these. Maybe you own these for a short term. Maybe you have an option on them. Just know that, oh, okay, looks like the... Uh, the earnings report is coming up, so maybe I don't want to trade them. Maybe I want to get out of my position, but this is it. If you guys like this video, smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Check out all my other videos. I really dive into a lot of things on uh, Google Sheets, and we make cool stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, other than that, see you guys in the next one.